live from the Koenig Wheel Studios, it's the hype is right. Five cars, four contestants, and a whole lot of opinions. Let's play. And let's bring out the cars for today. contestants for today hey guys my name is levi gates and i am the brand development manager for the rag company hi guys i'm uh human rahimi i'm a formula drift driver and i'm here with bill murray dead oh he got all of that one um here to tell you if the hype is right what's up guys it's peter from speed academy here let's get started with the dc5 integra type r the integra type r the DC5 Integra Type R. This car, I actually really like, and I think it's just right. A lot of people love this car. I think it's a cool car. I certainly think that is under-hyped. It is an underappreciated Type R. This thing's sick, bro. Uh, since we never got it here, I don't think there's been a lot of reviews or hype built up about it, but I personally have driven it. It is a phenomenal car. I remember when this came out, none of us really had a lot of money. And uh, even though we all wanted it and it didn't come to the US, we didn't really have the money or the funds at our ages back then to get this car. I think this might you know, hurt a couple egos, but I think it's overhyped. It is not worth what they go for. I mean, just maybe nostalgia or something, that's cool, but it's it's a cool car, but it's front wheel drive. It's tuned well and it has good balance and I think that's really cool about it. It has like a, that that part of it makes me wanna like it. Perfect balance, the engine suits the, the chassis so, so well. It is definitely a, a much tighter and a more Type R-esque car than the uh, RSX Type S, which we got here, which is more of a, a softer car built out to be, I think, a, a little bit more luxurious than the Type R models. And if it was a much less expensive car, I would say perfect hype, right? But it's just so overly priced and the people that I've seen that own them, I don't know, they they kind of go crazy with them. And I mean, it's what, like 200 horsepower, give or take? Think of it as a, a DC2 Type R, just more refined, a little bit heavier, but still an awesome car to drive, so. This is one of those that I think everybody wanted it. It was just right the way it was. And if you can grab one of these today, lucky. No, I, I, I'm gonna say overhyped for sure. Um, but they're cool, definitely overhyped. It's certainly on the underhyped menu for me. SW20 MR2. The SW20 Toyota MR2. All right, so this is my favorite car. Uh, one of my favorite cars of all time, if not my favorite car all the time, is the SW20 MR2. These cars, I think, are still one of my top favorite. If I could buy one today, if, out of all the cars we just talked about, if I could only choose one to pick for myself, it would be this. I think a super cool car for its time. I think it's in the just right category. Under hype like crazy like they are one of the most fun cars to drive like really well balanced really like you can really have a good time driving that car even if it's not fast i've had the non-turbo versions the, the turbo versions like this is a fun car these things are insane rear wheel drive i love the styling i love the target top i love the two-seater feel to it i love the design elements, the buttresses. I like all the different vents. I love, I just, I love the way this car looks. I had a friend who had one and uh, super big pain to work on in the engine bay, even to remove the engine. Uh, it's, it's like a mid-engine car, of course. So it's gonna be difficult to work on. Believe it or not, it is the first car I ever drifted on. Uh, I learned how to drift on that car. Um, I would go to Turner Field 
if anyone knows, you know, anything about drifting in Atlanta and how it started, I'm gonna go with underhyped. Like uh, that that car is awesome. Get one, drive one. It, it's worth every penny. Driving wise, it was pretty good. So I certainly do find them to be decent streetcars uh, from a track or you know real high horsepower performance aspect. They they do require a lot more work. Uh, you can see you know, people do K swap them to make a ton of power and then go fast in a straight line. The Boosted Boys have done an amazing job with one of those. So I've been able to be lucky enough to see a couple really well done versions and work on some really well done versions of this car. I would love to find one. Problem is now money's going up on them. The money is, uh, is this is a this was a underhyped car when it came out. New MR2 Siki. Now I think it's almost a it's a just right car, and it's getting ready to really be an amazing uh, piece of machinery going into probably the next decade. I think a lot of people slept on this vehicle. Uh, there's certainly a lot of potential in them, but I just don't find they have enough of that like credit and, and hype to make them a really, really sought after vehicle. So I'm just gonna put them in that just right category. Definitely underhyped. One of my favorite, favorite cars, so underhyped. Eagle Talon TSI. Eagle Talon. TSI. Eagle Talon TSI. Uh, disclaimer here that I used to own about 15 of those cars, the, the 1G DSMs. Uh, back in the day, so uh, I do love those. I have a soft spots for them. This car was uh, a very underhyped car when it first came out, especially the first body style. I think the idea is cool and, I, and I'm gonna say just right. The idea, all wheel drive, you know, it's cool. Like it's a cool car. I find those cars were almost ahead of their time. Turbo four cylinders back in the day that made incredible amounts of power. I think they really paved the way for turbocharging in North America. I think those that knew what they had really do love it and really do live for it now, especially when you add in the turbo and all wheel drive, you basically have a, an Evo sitting there in front of you. Like looks of them don't look that great, but it's just like, okay, if you can get a cheap little car like today's market and you could find it cheap and just drive it and have fun with it, why not? Like go have a blast. The TSIs I always knew were really super uh, important versions of the cars because of the Conquest TSI. Now. I loved a Chrysler Conquest. I thought they were wicked cars, the Mitsubishi Starion. I wanted one of those bad. I couldn't afford one of those. That's why I bought the 85 Supra. The uh, Supras, the Mark IIs back then in the late 90s, you could pick up for five grand in great shape all day long, no worries. You couldn't get into a TSI. And when these came out, seeing the TSI, knowing they were turboed, knowing that they were all wheel drive, you knew that this was a beast. Super cool cars, easy to make a, a, a ton of power with. Also all wheel drive, but they did lack, uh, I, I think in the, the suspension department, they were always kind of go fast in a straight line type of cars. They weren't uh, used for a lot of track days. So I don't really know how reliable they are. They're probably not, I, I can't imagine. Um... This car was pretty rad. And when the 95 popped out, uh, that's when that new body style hit. That thing just, it. there's nothing more beautiful. Uh, and I think it was an underhyped car. It still is an underhyped car. And I think more people need to recognize the potential that this car had. They're cool, they're cool. I was like, just right, just right. I mean, brutally fast, all wheel drive, quick, just mean, mean, mean. I don't think the world was ready for it, especially the North American market was ready for it. And the Eagle brand, Chrysler's brand, didn't really do a lot to push that car into what it could be. Um, I would put them at underhyped, which I know may upset some of you, but I, I certainly think they are an underhyped car right now. They de deserve a lot more respect than they have. Honda Del Sol. The Honda Del Sol. The Del Sol. Ah, oh, man. 
I, I think that car falls into the generation of a very niche product like the CRX. This was kind of a car that, you know, if you had a Miata, you could get one of these too. However, in my, when I was younger, I didn't really like them. I thought they were just, just uh, not great cars at all. I thought they were silly. Just never been a fan. I don't know. I, like, I don't think they look good. I don't really know what the appeal to them. I worked at a car wash at the time, and so I was, I remember seeing customers bring them in, and I got in, and I was like, who would buy one of these? This is, this is just. There's not a ton of people that loved it. Uh, the people that do are very fanatical about it. It's a decent chassis. You can certainly swap a ton of good motors into it and, you know, make good power. The window goes back, it, it goes down in the back, like, so you can roll down the back window. That's kind of the, the, the most interesting thing about that car. However, in my old age, I look at these and go, I can see myself buying one of these. I can see myself cruising around in a little Honda Del Sol. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure my buddy Anthony would have something to say about that. Would probably want me to get one. Uh, overhyped. Even if I don't think really people hype them up anymore. Maybe this the the still the, the Civic people out there that still you know go after these old Civics and, and pay like I don't know it seems crazy like seven grand for a two hundred thousand mile Civic. <laughs> They're hard to find, which I get. I mean, kind of. I don't really get it, but but for me. I, I wasn't never a T-top kind of convertible guy, so I, I don't love it. I think it's a just right kind of car. Now, I look at these and I think at the time they were underhyped. I think they're still kind of underhyped because these things are really lightweight. Current motor swaps that you can do now, target top, two-seater, dope. Like, this is it. I would, I would, I would jump on one of these in a heartbeat. Uh. No, they just didn't look as cool. Even when you like made them look cool, they still look like like a just not. No, no. Nah. At the time, it was a very underhyped car. I think it still is a very underhyped car. And I think now, with all the import technology that we have for tuning and engine swaps and performance parts and everything, I think you can turn that Del Sol into an absolute rocket ship. And I think that car on its own is still very underhyped. I'm gonna show you guys my MR2 here. I need some TLC for sure. It's a right hand drive. Remember this guy? What's this? This is a iPod. Who still uses iPods? Look at that.